Well, we're here at the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition with wine critic and wine press Northwest columnist Dan Berger. And uh, Andy Perdue and you have talked about kind of a, uh, I wouldn't say a hot topic, but it's kind of a little known topic that about Mega Purple. And can you describe yeah. what Mega Purple is and how it can appear in wines w uh, with people not necessarily knowing that it's there or not? Yeah, Mega Purple is a, an interesting uh, compound. It's a commercial product that's sold by a division of Constellation. And there are other products uh, similar to it, Mega Red, and there are a couple of others. And uh, they are essentially concentrates. Uh, they're uh, wine concentrates. They're made from uh, Tainturier grapes, uh, which is a, a grape variety uh, that has uh, red juice, which means that uh, the skins are going to be pretty black, and then the color of the juice adds to it. And, when you grind these things up and you make a, uh, in effect, a concentrate out of it, uh, the stuff is really, really, really thick and dense. And when you add it to uh, an existing red wine that is deficient in color, it fixes the color to a darker hue. The nice part about it, of course, is that it makes the wine look more red wine-like. So you can take a, a basic uh, dark rosé or even a light rosé and turn it into a pitch black wine by using some of this mega purple. The difference here is that mega purple is not without its own uh, aromatics. It does have a flavor and it has a, a smell. And it's a somewhat of a neutral red wine smell and it does detract slightly from the varietal character depending on the percentage that you use. And if you were to use uh, as much as one tenth of one percent of the uh, wine, in mega purple, you're going to alter the aromatic compound to a degree that makes the wine uh, less interesting. And um, I have no particular objection uh, to mega purple's use for wines they're going to sell for three or four or five dollars a bottle. But when you start to get into fine wine, mega purple has a way of homogenizing the aromatics and the taste. And then, of course, the result is going to be a less interesting wine because it's not quite as varietal and it doesn't usually have as much uh, personality because it's not coming from the soil as much as it is from this, this chemistry. How rampant do you think the use of Mega Purple is in the industry? Well, the sad thing is uh, that uh, what I've heard, and I, and I can't prove this at all, but uh, chemists and winemakers tell me that it's widespread, that people are using it all over the industry, whether it's in California, Washington, Oregon, wherever it is, widespread uh, use of uh, Mega Purple. Now, that means uh, that uh, some fairly expensive wines, including $30, $40 red wines, are going to have some Mega Purple in them. Does the consumer know? Generally not. Um, if the wine doesn't have distinctive varietal character, you can make the assumption that somebody played with the wine in a, in a way that didn't uh, help it. It just simply made it darker and more concentrated. Why would anybody want it more concentrated wine? Uh, some people believe that it leads to higher scores. Um, since I don't use scores in my wine writing, I don't frankly care. <laughs> So, it, would you have any sort of estimation or belief, and say, if you had, like the, uh, for instance, cabs or rosé, cabs maybe fifteen dollars or less, or rosé or a white blush category, what percentage of use in mega purple there might be at a competition the size of the Washington or the uh, Subsequent Chronicle? Yeah, I wouldn't know uh, what percentage, but I can tell you that uh, my experience has been that using Mega Purple for making uh, pink wine is often a complete failure because the stuff is really, really thick and dense. It's about 65% of sugar. So when you add it to a wine, you better do it before fermentation or you're going to actually add sugar to the product if you do after fermentation. And as a result, also, you don't have quite as much control over the actual color you're going to get. Because keep in mind, this is a red wine concentrate, and using it in a pink wine, you don't need very much at all. I'd say perhaps uh, maybe, I don't know, one one-hundredth of one percent. Uh, obviously, <laughs> you're talking about some really small quantities. So, and, and then, again, what's the grape variety, and where the heck do they grow this Well, stuff the grape at? variety is, is, is fairly common. Um, it's a, uh, either they're using ruby red, or they're using uh, perhaps uh, Alicante Ganzen, which is a variety that is, Alicante is a Tainturier grape, and uh, uh, it's very prolific, uh, has a red 
juice. Most uh, white, uh, most uh, red wines have white juice, and then the color comes from the skins. But in this case, these are tincturiers, and uh, they have uh, red juice, and they have really thick skins, and they have lots of pigment in the skins, and so forth. So it's an entirely legal product. There's nothing illegal about this, of course. But I think that the best part about it for $5 wine, $6 wine, is that it can concentrate that color and make it look more legitimately like a red wine. So do you know of vineyards or blocks in California where this is grape, where these grapes are being grown? Uh, not specifically, but I would guess that probably most of it comes out of the central San Joaquin Valley simply because uh, I can't imagine anybody taking up expensive vineyard land to plant uh, uh, Alicante Ganzan. Just not exactly <laughs> good use of the soil. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anything else about uh, Mega Purple that I didn't ask that you wanted to mention? Well, the only thing that uh, comes to my mind, and it's something that we haven't proven yet, and we've done some tests with it, we've done taste tests, we've done aromatic tests, and so forth. The one thing we haven't been able to uh, confirm is if, if there's any visual connection to uh, use of Mega Purple and what you see on the side of the glass as you swirl it. There has been an estimation by some people that if you have a wine that has lots of uh, perhaps uh, as much as one-tenth of one percent of Mega Purple, that it actually will change the legs uh, of the, on the side of the glass and actually will make them sort of uh, purplish hmm. uh, because most red wine, the legs are sort of clear. But uh, it's not been proven yet. We've done some various uh, random tests, but they're not scientific and we can't prove anything. We do know that widespread use of uh, Mega Purple has, uh, uh, is somewhat of an addicting process because it does, in a, in a light vintage, um, there are Pinot Noirs, I, I, I don't want to name names obviously, but there are, there are some Pinot Noirs that have come along that are pitch black and you wonder, how did they get a pitch black Pinot Noir out of that vintage? And then you make the assumption that they had to use something to, to do it. Okay, well, uh, in addition to your quarterly column for Wine Press Northwest Magazine, where else can people read your writings at? I do a, a weekly newsletter on wine called uh, Vintage Experiences, and the website is www.vintageexperiences.com. I also write a syndicated column that appears in newspapers around the country, and I do some uh, writing for trade magazines and uh, a lot of speaking engagements. Okay, very good. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.